Hi dear viewers, this is Oresh Kamoli with another session of the website programming course on the Python programming language and the Django framework. Again, as always, a very warm and heartfelt welcome from me. If you remember, in the previous session we prepared the checkboxes and through one function that we wrote we received one of the checkboxes but in this session we are going to do this dynamically that is we are going to receive as many data as we have through a foring that we write and thus receive all the active and inactive checkboxes or on and off checkboxes okay uh, in order to make this process dynamic first I am going to need the PK the names are the PKs okay so here at first I write a query all right in the newsletter for the email the status equals one okay I write a query yeah, that is going to do a lot for us. And this is my query. It returns all the emails for us. Uh, we were in the emails. Now, uh, in order to test this, we set this inside a for ring. We say for i in, yeah, print, yep. I print I okay I refresh the page submit and as you see the emails are being shown to me okay now I change this to i.pk and test again as you see now we have access to the PKs six seven five six seven and the name of the checkboxes. So at first I wrote a for ring that gets the PKs. And now I use these two lines. Uh, I remove these two lines from here and set them as a sub branch of four. Okay, now I say request.post.get based on, yeah, I, PK, and then print X. And now I submit again, as you see, three nouns have been returned. I check the first one to see what's going on. Yeah, the first one has become none. Probably there's some problem here somewhere in the names and how they are being shown. We need to change the str a string. Now again, we check this. As you see, it is okay now. So the reason why it did not work was the problem with the PK was not of the PK type and now we change it to PK and now I check the first one the first one is on and the other two non I check the middle one the first one yeah and the first and third are none and the middle one on and now I choose all three okay and my outcome would be on for all three okay so now based on the name that we gave the checkboxes dynamically uh, what happened is that we have received a value for each checkbox and now we can do the processes on them for instance uh, if we are going to delete based on the option that have been checked we just need to set a condition that says uh, for instance, if our x equal equal on, if that i checked was checked, then we say x equals, yep, x equals newsletter filter, we say 
where pk equals i dot pk of the type get yep and b dot delete now what have i done i said i my x uh let's change this x to str so that we make sure it is str here the type ig command helps us a lot using the type command we can see the different types of each okay we say if our x str is on that is if it had been checked then here based on i dot uh, pk delete that field now we are going to test it i refresh the page i choose id number five now it needs to be deleted and as you see id number five has been deleted and whichever else i choose i choose six and seven together and submit and as you see six and seven have been deleted okay thus i can do my processing any way i want to uh, to do and whatever i want these check fields to be now quite easily we could recognize which boxes have been checked and which ones have not been checked based on the dynamized options okay now we are uh, able to make the delete section or for the email section say the ones who have been checked have some emails sent to and we can have separate pages and each one of them for a special purposes be equipped with a checkbox okay the important point was to make the checkbox dynamic that was the important thing yeah there's no other point and also there was the SDR trick that we needed to make and using the foreign uh what happened is that quite easily we were able to make this dynamic but there's a major problem with this method because now we have set a foreign in all our data uh to draw the pks and check the outcome pk and see if it has been activated or not because we have only a limited number of data it is being done very fast but imagine we may have 10,000 data or even more if this data were to be processed in our foreign one by one to see which PK has been used and which one hasn't then it is going to uh, slow our site down considerably you may have run into some major problems on some sites that have a problem loading is uh, loading is due to their name uh, problem uh, so this method is a good method but not of a such high quality and security but if in some occasions we are sure that the number of the records which are going to be checked are not too many we can use this method we may have some short options in the admin and we may want to see which ones have been chosen then uh, using a full ring we are able to perform this function but for heavy data where we are dealing with thousands of data then it's not going to be such a best method and it would not be a perfect method we, uh, we need to use the second method that we talked about using the arrays we are going to see which ones are checked and which ones aren't we are going to check uh, which ones are activated right now using the uh, ring method we say take all into account and see which ones have been activated by using the array uh, needing all of the data but uh, we don't need all of the data but only the ones that are active so as you see uh, they are very different this method is for large data in the follow-up we are going to deal with the arrays and see how it works maybe you want to deal with the small numbers of data and suffice using to the foreign but nevertheless we are going to show you the other method so that you might be able to use it later on in your projects okay